In this workshop, um, we will be introduced to the role that schools play in providing students with uh, access to appropriate guidance. And let me just remind everyone that the webinar will be uh, recorded and it will be also uh, disseminated. And with no further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce and welcome uh, Daniela Bunea. Uh, Daniela is a teacher of English as a foreign language and the class teacher at the secondary school in Sibiu in Romania for uh, 26 years now. She is an e twinning ambassador, uh, a National Geographic certified educator, and has been embedding career education in her lessons uh, for many years. Uh, with e and National Geographic projects, but also uh, with uh, other collaborative projects, she has supported uh, her students in effectively crisping, let's say, the ropes of turning their passion into hard work and skills and to um, turn them into nice ideas in terms of uh, supporting their trajectories. So, Daniela, the floor is yours. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. OK. Thank you for your kind introduction. I would like to welcome everybody to today's live event. Uh, I can see only the first slide. So the slide is uh, coming. OK, Sometimes thank you. A couple of seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Let me start by saying that uh, building students career development awareness and uh, yeah, actively supporting them in taking the right pathway to work are actions that are of paramount importance nowadays. And uh, yes, with this webinar. I'm hoping to help you to help everybody have a look at a few practices that uh, foster the best environment for students so that they can make sound career choices uh, in the future. Uh, may I ask if you can all see the presentation? I can see it. Let's see the participants. I can see it. Thank yeah. you. Great. We are Thank saying you. yes. OK. And if you cannot see the presentation, please just try to um, log off and log in again and it should work. Thank you very much. OK. In this webinar, I am going to try to teach you about the fundamental role teachers play in uh, students professional orientation because uh, OK, teachers play a big role. And also schools play a big role, a big as in important, in providing students with access to appropriate guidance to assist them in their educational and career choices. And uh, yes, teachers and schools, teachers and schools working together they can be equipped with an array of resources. And teachers can use these resources in their classroom to support their students in making informed decisions when it comes to their career. At the same time, acknowledging their strengths, their weaknesses, their uh, relevant work related skills. My main idea is that special emphasis should be placed on the whole school guidance approach. Uh, let us start with uh, successful transitions. This is a very important term because, OK, what's a uh, successful transition? Transition meaning from uh, second, lower secondary to upper secondary or into work based training after compulsory education or uh, into work at any age, really. These successful transitions are life enhancing for any individual. And indeed, they are crucial to our future social and economic well-being, to our future as a society, really. 
These transitions are also an indicator of a good school. Career education and career guidance are therefore or should be at the very heart of a school's program. And all the teachers have or should have a role in securing these successful transitions for their students. Now we have uh, quite a few terms here. Understanding these key terms is vital to understanding the teacher's roles. We will be talking therefore about career education, career guidance, lifelong guidance and lifelong learning. What does each of these terms mean? Let's start with career education. Career education um, refers to the learning activities that uh, help students gain the knowledge and skills they need to plan their future and uh, manage their career in the future. Ideal career education is done by subject teachers in their daily teaching. If we move on uh, to career guidance, career guidance refers to small group or one-to-one -one activities that enable our students to use those uh, that knowledge and those skills acquired in career education to make decisions about learning and work that are right for them. Career guidance can be done by subject teachers, but more often than not, it is done by form tutors, learning mentors, learning support assistants, career advisors, counselors. A whole school approach to career guidance refers to blending career education and career guidance into a mixture of activities with the main aim of helping students with uh, the planning of their futures in uh, learning and work throughout their lives. We need to move on. Lifelong guidance. Lifelong guidance is part of lifelong learning. Because lifelong learning includes learning across a range of education, training and employment contexts. This learning can be formal or informal. So lifelong guidance. Just to make uh, to tell you another definition enables individuals to identify their abilities their competencies, their interests, and their talents. They enable them to make meaningful educational training and occupational decisions. And uh, in the end, overall, to manage their individual life paths in learning and work. About the subjects of lifelong guidance. Who are the main subjects of uh, lifelong guidance? OK, they are individuals leaving education and training for the first time, first timers, making their initial transition into the uh, labor market. They are also workers who need to reskill or to upskill in order to remain employed. employed in order to enhance their abilities at a certain moment in their career. Within and between employers. There are also those not in employment at all. Those underemployed. And also low skilled workers, so a lot of categories. And this is why, because there are so many categories, this is why career adaptability is important. I think you would agree with me that career adaptability is a vital concept uh, nowadays. Careers are becoming uh, increasingly complex. Individuals change jobs more frequently, learn new skills. Learning and developing career adaptability is therefore a must. It is a must. And four key dimensions have been identified relating to this. And they are learning through challenging uh, work. 
the next dimension would be updating the knowledge base and honing the ability to grasp new areas of knowledge, both general and within one's field. The third dimension in formal learning through personal networks, mostly. And the fact that the most successful navigators of career change are self-directed and uh, self-reflexive. To sum up, workers of today must take advantage of uh, learning opportunities in order to be able to transform themselves into more resilient individuals, into individuals able to manage both risk and uncertainty in education, training and employment contexts that are today risky and uncertain. These learning opportunities are formal, that is in further education and training, but there is also the learning while working pattern. The actors and services that make up the ecosystem of lifelong guidance provide assistance across an individual's life course. There are, of course, different levels, different dimensions, different contexts. This can look a bit uh, frightening, but it is a very important image at EU level. I can uh, ask Nikos to uh, put the link in the chat. Thank you. What is really important for us as teachers working in EU in education nowadays is the fact that there are in this ecosystem quite a few recent innovative practices identified in this ecosystem of lifelong guidance. And I would like to put forward at least one of them, which presents evidence of impact of lifelong guidance and uh, is consequently a, an example of good practice. Uh, this uh, innovative uh, practice is called My Journey. It is in fact a tool. It measures soft skills relevant to employment, education and training and personal development. It was first developed in Ireland and uh, OK, it's a tool that aims at um, helping people find employment, progress into education. They, it, this tool also helps them develop personally and connect with their local communities. It works with a range of people, including the long term unemployed and the disadvantaged. It is, in fact, a distance travel model. And uh, it measures five soft skill areas, and I listed them here. Literacy and numeracy confidence, general confidence, goal setting and self-effectiveness together, communication skills, very important nowadays, connections with others, and general work readiness. The tool does this. It helps in identifying goals specific to the individual. Then it helps in planning next step and then tracking progress to achieving these goals over time. It was launched only in early 2020, but it's been very successful. And perhaps the link is already in the chat, Nikos. If you have a look, at this site, you will see what an important tool for the people uh, in work nowadays this is. My journey is a very interesting tool. Now, uh, if we are to go back to our current students enrolled in schools across Europe, let us consider the different stages of a student's life because we can map various career guidance tools that can be used successfully at particular stages of a student's life. 
depending on objectives, these tools, and I'm just going to pick some of them. Uh, these tools are for ages, for instance, three to five, obviously games, competitions, career days, for ages uh, six to nine. Shadowing their parents at work and other uh, extracurricular activities. Extracurricular. For ages 10 to 14, employer talks, coaching, psychometric tests, structured career information. Moving forward for ages 15 to 18, job shadowing. Uh, visits to universities and colleges, internships in firms, taster apprenticeships, and after the age of 19, work experience. Mock interviews, but also real interviews, really. CV creation, even more structured and more specific career information. Individual counseling at this age, career fairs, and voluntary work. These tools need to be put into a common framework by the school as a whole. It is then that a school can provide its students with access to appropriate guidance to assist them through and through in their educational and career choices. I will present now a support model for a whole school guidance approach to career education. Let me tell you that since September 2017, this support model has already supported many schools in designing, developing and implementing a comprehensive whole school guidance program. The framework uh, starts with defining career as being uh, constructed through a range of learning experiences and interactions with others. And by others, I understand peers, colleagues, parents, teachers, guidance counselors, employers, and so on. A school should ensure that its students have access to appropriate guidance. This will lead students to make effective choices and decisions about their life, lives. We can already see the holistic nature of guidance here and the important role career guidance plays in facilitating decision making and life choices and in promoting and supporting the individual's well-being. Now, the framework comprises the following activities designing, delivering, and evaluating guidance, guidance learning and developmental programs for various settings, such as individual, group settings, classroom settings, providing uh, individual and group counseling, providing information about the labor market and about different careers, planning and organizing workplace learning, after establishing links with the business community. Using tests to facilitate career decision making and personal development and to support learning and uh, educational choices. Working with parents. And last but not least, establishing and developing ties with institutions of further education and training and institutions of um, higher education, it can be seen clearly that these are the pillars of a whole school approach where many actors, many actors in many settings and at various times are involved. This is the model. It's the, a wheel. It's a support model. I think uh, Nikos has already put the link in the chat. So this support model 
is presented here is presented here uh, and it is a continuum model now some information about it guidance for all to the left guidance for all means that it is provided to all students to the right guidance for some means that it is provided to specific groups of students for example students in senior cycles or uh, students who are making trans transitions remember successful transitions such as uh, primary school into first year of lower secondary or junior cycle to senior cycle or school or compulsory education to higher or further education and training guidance for few the last one uh, down there means that some students only a few students really may experience personal crisis or may require more intensive support as they make transitions some students may be vulnerable they may have uh, additional needs the guidance counselor in collaboration with school management and staff and with other external organizations and personnel deliver a wide range of learning activities and this will to be filled in to support students if you look to the left uh, personal and social development the part where it says developing myself to support the student's educational development the part where it says developing my learning and to support the student's career development the part where it says uh, developing my career path the guidance counselor in the middle is the specialist and uh, the guidance counselor plays a central role in the design and delivery of the whole school guidance program obviously the stakeholders involved vary across schools according to local resources local needs on the next slide i have an uh, example of a completed will the link is in the chat again maybe what you can see now it's uh, very very small uh, I am uh, trying now to explain a few things about guidance for all part because uh, this seems to be uh, the most complicated not complicated as in uh, too complicated but involving many many elements so uh, i have found this explanation and it's a very good explanation guidance for all therefore is made up of these three elements remember developing myself developing my learning developing my career path these are compet uh, the, these are so to the right are the competencies corresponding to each element for instance if i just uh, pick one one can develop their learning by employing effective personal learning or exam strategies developing my learning they are really quite self-explanatory and i would like us to try a task together now uh, imagine that um, oh sorry <laughs> i clicked twice <laughs> uh, one teacher says this i speak to all oh sorry one teacher says this i speak to all lower secondary first years about what they can expect from uh, post primary school on their first day in september where do you think this fits uh, guidance for all guidance for some or guidance for a few if somebody can uh, write his or her uh, opinion in the chat and maybe nikos uh, can tell me if they say i speak to all lower secondary students 
So Sylvia says some uh, Gabriel guidance for all. Thank you. Really, the keyword is all. And yes, the uh, solution here is, uh, I hope you can see the green tick, guidance for all. We can go on because I have a few. But uh, the next one. Honest, to be honest, in the chat there were more some. Oh, uh, OK. So maybe okay. But in maybe some. Clarify why it was for all and not for some, maybe. OK. We go back. If they say a teacher says like this, I speak to all lower secondary first years about what they can expect from post primary school on their first day in September. So this is induction day and uh, everybody is together on the first day of school of the new school year. And a teacher, if she or he says, I speak to all lower secondary first years, each and every one of those first year students receive receives the same information. So the guidance from the teacher is for all the students. Now, how many uh, they indeed uh, follow the, uh, the advice or take uh, a certain path as following the after following their advice. It, it's after that. It's not on that induction day in September on the first day of school. Maybe if we go to the next one. The next one says like this in my classroom, the next teacher in my classroom, I have a list of jobs that my subject is important for. Is this for everybody for all? Is this for some students or is this just for a few students? OK, Maria says for some, but let's wait for the rest of the participants as well. Thank you. For all, 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 some, some. OK, I think that the majority of the participants indicate all. OK, we and so Anna and Anna, sorry for interrupting. Anna uh, has said something interesting. It talks with all, but useful for some. So the and discourse might be inclusive, but eventually it might be relevant and useful for only some of them. Yes, because nowadays we need to be inclusive. And this is the right answer, really. It will touch some of them, you know, so it can be addressed to all, but uh, really only some of them will be touched. I have a list of jobs that my subject is important for. N not everything, just some. L let's see the, the, the next one. Um, another teacher says, on the school open afternoon or open evening, I share a video on jobs related to my subject. So maybe a teacher teaches, uh, I don't know, physics, and uh, that teacher shares a video on uh, but job related to uh, physics. For all, for some, or for a few? What do you think? So for the moment, we see few. OK, now several some have come up, some or few, depending on students' interests, some, 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 few. And the answer is again some, because only a few, uh, it would be too restrictive. Physics, because it's a subject, right? Physics relates to so many careers. And it, uh, we can't say that it's only for uh, a few. It's for some, not for all, not for all, but for some it is. Another one, I help organize, another teacher says, I help organize information afternoons for parents each year. 
information as in information uh, about uh, careers, about connected to the, their uh, children's uh, professional orientation. So I help organize information afternoons for parents each year. For all, for uh, some or for a few. Oh, so far all participants write all. <laughs> yeah, and we are getting better at this because this is the right answer. OK, thank you. If we go on. Oh, I have a bit of a delay. No, OK, now it's good. I train the volleyball team. And uh, uh, and I keep my eye on the weaker student, academically speaking. I make sure that weaker student has opportunity on the playing field. OK, so far we have two participants indicating that this is guidance for few. OK, it's raising few, 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 few. So, I told you we are getting better at this because this is for a few. That weaker student, academically speaking. OK, thank you. One more, I think. Uh, if I can. Yeah. I coordinate speakers uh, to come. Because of the chat, I, I can't read them. Uh, yeah, I coordinate speakers to come into our school and speak to students on their personal development. Guidance for all. Yeah, all, all, it, all. <laughs> yeah, and even if there are no keywords here, really is explicitly there are no keywords still because we are getting better at this okay you chose well it is all okay if we go on i think this is the last one uh i always help any student who asks me a question whether i teach them or not again <laughs> But we are we are getting better at this. So I always help any student who asks me a question whether I teach them or not. Guidance for all as far as I can see. Yes. The participants okay. have clearly stated. <laughs> because of the word any student of the words any student okay but uh, still this is only for some because uh if you if you think about it not all students would ask all the teachers so not all teachers would be asked by all the students so this is not all this is for some in time doing this exercise by doing this kind of exercises we and working together as a school, the guidance counselor, the subject teachers, the learning assistants, everybody working together, each and everyone bringing his or her own expertise. We can build this wheel of learning activities. Perfectly, really. Daniela, if I may, because yep. I can see that participants uh, are wondering why is it for some and not for all. So let's uh, give an example. For, uh, if you have 20 students and out of those 20 students, only 10 of them come to you in order to ask you something, then you provide guidance to those 10, but not to the 20 students of your classroom. So in that sense, it's like... Uh, yeah, it's like focusing on the students that actually have, um, let's say, the approach of asking a question or they do not feel shy, but 
Is it eventually guidance for all? It is not because uh, each teacher has got his or her own uh, little sphere of influence and uh, that teacher who uh, is not asked by 10 students, only by the other 10, you know? So the first, the 10 students that uh, who do not ask uh, questions, they uh, they, they are the they are uh, the people who make that teacher doing guidance for some for some 10, not for the uh, all the 20 students in the class. OK, and I can see that uh, Maria says, but if all of them come, so if all of them come for a question, I suppose that would be guidance for all. Yeah, but uh, uh, usually uh, in my experience, not all the students would come, not all of them for specific subjects. Remember, so um, uh, or for specific uh, fields. Career fields or uh, or information really. Uh, not all of them would come. Mm -hmm. Still, this is debatable, right? And in the school with as i said so many professionals the guidance counselor the subject teachers the tutor uh, the tutors of the forms uh, the learning assistants everybody working together and each and every one of them bringing their own expertise the all these areas can become more clear in that context in that context and with this regard, Jana has um, stated an interesting question in the chat. Why is it important to distinguish so precisely between the different types if it is about a whole school slash integrated approach? Uh, it is important so that you have a structure and you uh, and uh, you know where exactly you are on the wheel so that for this part of the wheel, you have certain strategies. For the other, another part of the wheel, you have other strategies. And by uh, by experience, really, <laughs> usually in the same context, by experience, you become you as a school become better and better at guiding your students towards uh, making the right, really, the right decisions for their uh, future in career, in life. Mm -hmm. This is why, because there is this uh, structure and uh, inside the structure, it's like with any structure, uh, you are more organized inside the structure and it's better. Uh, the students shouldn't know this, obviously. Uh, uh, you, the makers of the wheel, <laughs> uh, working every day, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yep. building on it, uh, making it better with every year, perhaps. Yeah. So you it's are... more about mapping and uh, providing the context at the school level and maybe reflect on whether you have some more specific strategies and actions uh, into that. Each and every school can uh, look, search for um, strategies that at some point are good for them. And OK, remember and use those strategies in other instances. Because they have used them before and they worked. Mm -hmm. And within a structure, it's easier. You know where you used it. Yes, it's and like with any structure, really. And also, we have another question from Vespina. Do you think we should be so strategic in education? I think it's for the benefit of our students, especially nowadays when, uh, yeah, the world around us uh, is <laughs> crashing upon us at times. Still, we need to be able to guide each student on his or her own uh, way. And w I really do believe, and in my experience it works, I really do believe that uh, we can do it. We can have for different students at different times with different interests, abilities, talents perceived. 
we can have them follow a certain, not have them follow, but help them in choosing the right career path, making the right decision for their future as, uh, yes, an, as an individual, not as, uh, not necessarily only as a worker in a certain field. Only yeah. one left. This is the last one I can see now. <laughs> I yeah. didn't remember how this many I put because question. because they, they are many and I selected some of some of them, but there are I think I have maybe 50. Uh, I organize work experience for all senior students. So the students in the last years of compulsory education. I organize work experience for all senior students. For all, for some or uh, for a few. So Christina says for some, Sylvia the same. Pelota, Petia, some, 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 okay. Still it is for all, because I didn't say the same work experience. It's work experience that we, as a, a whole school decided upon, we decided on this work experience, but tailored to these students, this one, for these other students, this work experience, for these other students, this work experience. So th this is indeed for all, because it should be inclusive, everybody should be included. This does not mean that the work experience is the same. They are in different, they can be in different places, they can be at various times, but it is for all. If anybody would want to <laughs> comment, please do, thank you. Or we can move on. I don't see something on the chat, so. Okay, I hope I was clear with the work experience, not the same work experience, okay. Uh, so Sylvia says, but uh, we refer just senior students. This is what that teacher says. Maybe she teaches a subject that is only taken in the senior years, you know? And yeah, she organizes work experience for all those uh, senior, year, uh, senior year students that she or he uh, teaches. OK, so it depends a lot on the context, because if she has only senior students, then it would yeah. be guidance for all. But if she had also other classes and other uh, students from other ages, then it would be guidance for some. Uh, yes, it depends where you put it. Yeah, the context. Yeah, OK. okay. okay. Yes, indeed, Christine, it was tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not all of them uh, were straightforward, but um, some of them were straightforward and a few were quite tricky. <laughs> so we have uh, all, some and uh, a few just like on the wheel. <laughs> the uh, quotations that I, uh, the quotes that I chose for today. Uh, let me tell you that um, it's important that all school staff uh, involved work together to ensure a consistent uh, approach. Uh, this um, collaboration will also help minimize any repetition, yes, or overlap. I have here a classification of many of the activities used in school for uh, career guidance. And uh, let me tell you that this is at primary level. Lots of activities, school-based activities, activities involving visitors, also uh, in schools, based in schools, these activities, but exploring beyond the school, some other activities, please uh, feel free to, uh, I don't know, for instance, uh, use my email address, it will be on the last uh, slide, and uh, I can give you the whole paper. It's a very interesting and rather surprising paper about uh, career guidance at primary level. Uh, and I, 
all these activities are explained rather in detail. I will stop on the next slides, uh, only at some of them. And uh, I will start with um, information brochure or career information sheets, also videos and podcasts. Maybe, uh, yes, information brochures uh, the most. They can become uh, quite handy in career guidance. I wrote here that uh, each such document or pack should contain, but they, they really, they shouldn't contain all of them. They can just uh, uh, focus on one of them. For instance, you can have the overview of the job in question. Uh, you can have the description of a typical working day, but obviously also you can have them together. And you can also add advice on how to become a professional and what skills are needed. In the information brochure, we can also have um, activities that can be done with students. And I have some examples here. Five minute discussions are OK. Activities included in big scale projects like a twinning project or Erasmus Plus projects. They can be visits or field trips. And uh, maybe a few th more things about this one because it's something that uh, I do and I can share my experience. I do it quite a lot with before the visit, while visiting and after the visit activities, which is very interesting. Uh, also, we can have professionals go back to school activities where guests are uh, invited. OK, let me tell you about uh, uh, visits or uh, uh, field trips. Uh, when uh, a teacher plans uh, a visit or a field trip. You start uh, by having some locations in mind. Then uh, you find relevant career sheets or so every all this is before the visit. You find relevant uh, videos or uh, career sheets information. You present these in class. And so some of them, right? Not only one of them. And according to your class's interests, you prioritize your possible locations. Then you contact professionals. This, this is like an activity and uh, like with steps. You do this and then you do this. Uh, you contact the professionals uh, that are a match or as close a match as possible. Then you arrange the excursion, the uh, field trip. Then you do the visit. OK. It, during the visit, other activities can be arranged. It really depends on the context. After the visit, uh, when you come back to school, you process with your students all the new information you got. You can do that by guiding questions such as uh, what's important to know when you are an architect or an engineer or a social worker. Do you find it an interesting career? Maybe even what intrigued you the most during the visit? Many more. But whatever the activities, teachers and the school need to ensure the contextualization of uh, integrated teaching. And uh, let me tell you that by uh, understanding how career choice develops in young people, we can assist our students better in making their career decisions. There have been quite a few attempts at explaining how career choice develops in young uh, people. Nowadays, most uh, uh, theories, they focus on the development of a person's view of the occupational choices available in a twofold process. And this process is made up of circumscription and compromise. This theory uh, was um, developed in 1981 by Linda Gottfredson. 
and it assumes that we build a cognitive map of occupations by picking up occupational stereotypes from those around us. And occupations are placed on this map using these three dimensions, sex type, prestige level, and field of work. And uh, as people, very young people, young people build this map, they begin to decide which occupations are acceptable and which are unacceptable. Those which fit their developing self-concept and those which uh, do not. The first process is circumscription. This means ruling out unacceptable options based on their perceived fit with their developing self-concept. This is a filtering process and it is quite crude at times inaccurate, but it is always lasting. There are uh, four, ta uh, four uh, stages of circumscription, and they are uh, they correspond to the different stages of a uh, student's life, as I presented before. Ages three to five, orientation to size and power. This is when children become aware that uh, grown-ups have roles in the world and they realize that they will eventually become grown-ups and take on roles uh, for themselves. The second uh, stage is from age six to age nine and uh, it's orientation to sex roles. Children uh, now begin to categorize the world around them with simple concrete distinctions. They become aware of the more obvious job roles and begin to assign them to particular sexes. And they will start to see jobs which do not match their gender identity as unacceptable. From age 10 to 14, the stage is orientation to social values. By now, children have encountered a wide range of job roles. They are now capable of more abstract uh, distinctions. They begin to classify jobs in terms of social status, uh, like uh, income, how much money they make, uh, education level, lifestyle, Based on the social environment in which they develop, they will begin to designate some jobs as unacceptable because they fall below a minimum status level. And at the same time, they will designate some higher status jobs as unacceptable because they represent too much effort or uh, risk of uh, failure. After the age of 15, the orientation is to internal or unique self. Mm, until this point, uh, circumscription has been mainly an unconscious process. But as uh, entry into the grown-ups world approaches, young people engage in a conscious search of the roles, still remaining in their social space, because you remember they uh, ruled out quite a few of them. In this process, they use increasingly complex uh, concepts, such as uh, I wrote down interests, abilities, values, the balance between uh, work and life, personality, and they exclude options which do not fit with their self-image and uh, they identify an appropriate field of work. This was the first stage. The second stage is compromise. Compromise happens after uh, circumscription has excluded options outside the perceived social and personal space. Individuals may be inclined to sacrifice roles they see as more compatible with their self-concept in favor of those that are per perceived to be more easily accessible. Now comes the role of the teachers. 
and the school. Because at, at this age, students are often limited by their lack of knowledge about how to access certain roles because of lack of information, because of lack of know-how and appropriate tactics and strategies, and because of lack of helpful social connections. So uh, when uh, doing career education, teachers need to assist their students and uh, through various learning activities, teachers need to help them answer questions such as uh, for the circumscription process. How did you decide on this range of choices? What options have you ruled out and why? This is very important. I wrote down that uh, in my experience, the possible reasons can be OK, this was uh, this job was not appropriate or uh, because of the family background or I think this is beyond my reach. Possible reasons. For the compromising process. What could be done to increase your chances of getting into the more satisfying role? And uh, the most uh, interesting of all, if you are getting away potential job satis satisfaction, is what you are getting in return of equal value. Of course, compromising is not a linear process. It is not. And uh, yes, uh, occupational categorizing and occupational mapping can overlap. And uh, more dimensions can be uh, used for the mapping, like uh, I wrote down here creativity, or is it worthwhile, or is it challenging? The main point for the school and the teachers to support the, the student in their career decision making by providing service and encouragement means that uh, these learning activities advance the occupational mapping until a decision is reached. Compromising is not a once in a lifetime process either, especially nowadays. And the whole process can be started or picked up again. I think that uh, you would agree with me that we can conclude that there are certain steps to be taken when developing a whole school guidance approach to career education. And the first step would be find someone, a certain person, to lead the program. Career education can make a big difference to your school, but uh, there is a lot to learn and there is a lot to coordinate. And it works best when someone, one person, has the time and the authority to develop and maintain and manage the school's approach. Step number two. Make sure all actors are comfortable with everything connected to guidance education. Guidance education requires some knowledge and skills that may need to be developed. All subject teachers and the other staff really can deliver it, but they will need some training and some support. Step number three, embed it in the curriculum. This is very important. Don't downgrade careers to the edges of the curriculum. It can interact with and enrich mathematics, languages, history, all other learning areas, really. Step number four, look beyond school. Because involving a range of partners from the community, partners, will help deliver effective career guidance. Talk to parents, talk to businesses, talk to trade unions, educational institutions, community organizations about what they can add to your program. And last but not least, step number five, start early. Career education can start in pre-primary school, but it is important to tailor all activities 
to specific year levels rather than having a one size fits all approach. The benefits, well, I only jotted down three of them really. Using a whole school approach to career guidance offers these benefits. First and foremost, increased engagement. Thinking about the future and uh, learning about the world is exciting. It will help your students to see uh, the relevance of what they are learning and also to think about why it is important to work hard. Another big benefit is increased equity of outcomes because career guidance is a positive impact on social mobility and social justice. It links disadvantaged young people to new resources and gives them inspiration. Again, last and not, but not least, improved long-term outcomes. Enhancing young people's knowledge and skills about uh, careers will set them on the right path. And it's a long path, long term. And in the long run, this will lead to better career outcomes for all the students at your school. Maybe if you want to work with me on answering some questions as far as various learning activities that you as subject teachers can do in your classroom, in your day to day teaching. If Nikos is helping me with the slides. Yes, with uh, Slido. Yes, thank you. Let me quickly. Can you see it? It's coming in my screen. Yes. OK, so I have pasted in the chat uh, the link and also the code. So you can join slido.com and insert the code 911196. And the I question think you is, can also use the phone if you. Yes, if you yes of course, the QR code. Yes. And the question is, how do you integrate career education into your daily teaching? You personally, you as a subject teacher in your own classroom, uh, in your day to day teaching. OK, we have our first input career talks. Nice. Important wherever an opportunity arises during your lesson and you didn't even plan it. Talk about that career one sentence, two sentences, three sentences, and yeah, it will make a difference in the long run. By talking about the skills somebody needs to have in all jobs, soft skills. Nice. Talking to my students. I'm in hairdressing school. I started to do interviews with different hairdressers. Role models, OK. Yep. Models. I constantly use examples depending on what is the lecture. We work on real projects, marketing, economy. CV making in the second class of Lyceum. We read application letters as part of an English writing. Talks, talking, nice. Learning students how to make their CV and research the open work position on internet projects, job interviews, CVs, communication skills. A application letters, really? Yes, cover letters. Very good. OK, assessment center simulation conversations. 
Interesting. Mentioning the skills used in classroom activities are skills that they also would be using when they start working. Yeah, transferability is a big issue. <laughs> Watching videos, reading articles, we connect with the professions in our classes and talk about the future professions. Nice. From my experience, we were also using parents' professions as a source, um, as a source of career information. So that was also something that we did. Yes, especially uh, very powerful with younger students. Mm -hmm. Talking to my student conversations about their skills. OK, thank you, everyone. And shall I quickly jump to the second uh, question? Yes, only, only two questions. <laughs> OK, and I saw here research about career general statistics, finding foreign business contact, live with the students and answer students' questions, organizing chats with alumni, telling about their study, working careers. Nice. Research for job qualities needed for the role models. Perfect, perfect. And the second question is with whom and how have you worked collaboratively to plan, deliver and evaluate your career education activities? With whom and how? In short. Collaboration. This is the first step towards whole school. Perfect. Students, right? You got the most important. <laughs> Without them, no object of work. Perfect. So again, if you um, if you are within slide.com, you can use the same password. OK, so so far we have Four. OK, now it keeps coming. Students, school counselor while making projects, career counselors with colleagues at school. Nice. Very important to work with your colleagues. Yes, other teachers. Colleagues, students, students, parents. Perfect, perfect. So the good thing is that uh, students and colleagues and uh, parents appeared and career counselors as well appeared several times. OK. So thank you very much for your participation. And now quickly going back to Daniela for a final word because we are already eight minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, just two more slides. Um, something about a lesson uh, that I deem as a, a model of good practice. I did it. Uh, not very long ago and I did it twice with two different sets of students. It's a lesson based on Europeana resources. And uh, OK, you can have the link in the chat. It's a lesson really based on events, sites and people connected to STEM careers. And my main aim with this lesson was to raise my students awareness about life and work with STEM in the 21st century. Uh, my students were 11. And uh, OK, it went like that. Uh, they were owners, the owners of a make believe time travel agency. And um, they worked together in a classroom activity of 50 minutes and came up with recommendations for their prospective customers to visit various places in the past because uh, by traveling there, uh, they could find out more information about important events, sites and people connected to uh, STEM careers. And the final products were visually appealing sheets, as you can see here. 
A few groups of students chose to advocate for traveling to disaster places, such as the Twin Towers on September 11, with the idea of doing STEM jobs that were of help to the people involved. Others decided upon either feasting their customers' eyes with the building of impressive constructions by excellent engineers and architects, such as the Great Wall of China, or uh, the Eiffel Tower, choosing for the French Tower, for example, the day of the opening. Yet another team opted for a date for it 20 days before the fin its finishing, which was very interesting. Uh, others chose to witness notable events involving people who had liked STEM ever since they were at school, such as a goalkeeper, uh, the Romanian Helmut Ducadam, uh, who was dubbed the hero of Seville because he, ha he had saved four consecutive penalty shots in the 1986 European Football Cup final. My students worked together and they agreed on content and design in their respective groups or pairs. They also worked in pairs. They had shared responsibility. Their work was interdependent. And in this way, obviously, they developed their collaborative skills. They also did uh, a splendid job at, and I am particularly proud of this. So they did a great job at revising their work based on feedback from a teacher, from me, and from their peers. Uh, I would like to thank you. Yeah, request control, sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you. I'm confident that uh, you are working diligently on guiding your students towards making sound career choices and that uh, there are good career outcomes for all the students at your school and these can be even better with a whole school approach. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, Daniela, and also great thanks to our participants and apologies for going beyond the time. I, any questions that you would like to set to Daniela? Or something, um, any comment? Please feel free to write to me. My email address, uh, yes. Uh, I can maybe. see many thank yous in the chat. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Can you show once again the last slide? Can you write Daniela's email? Yes. I will paste it for you in the chat. I am very enthusiastic about the, this subject. I have been a class teacher for 26 years now. And uh, in Romania, class teachers uh, have got a lot of uh, activities to do as far as professional orientation is concerned and I am uh, very okay with doing it. Also in my um, English classes I teach English as a foreign language and uh, as I mentioned before whenever an, an opportunity arises I, I take it, I grab it and I talk about this career or that career Great. So many, many, many thanks. And also my colleague Marta has uh, pasted the evaluation form, uh, so feel free to complete it. It's really short, so we can uh, be aware of uh, what you liked or how we could improve our future work. Um, and uh, the recording will also be available um, in the platform. And once again, many thanks to all of you and many thanks to Daniela for the excellent Thank presentation. You. And we will be in touch. Thank you all. OK. Have Thank a lovely you. afternoon, Bye. evening. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye.